Mr. Ahmed Mansour is a, a United Arab Emirates Human Rights Defenders, and uh, he was last year uh, laureate of Martin Ennals Award for Human Rights Defender here in Geneva. So, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, I will be talking about the uh, civil society in UAE from human rights uh, angle. Uh, there are two items really in the agenda please that I will be uh, talking about. Uh, first of all, the governing law that governs the, the uh, NGO-like uh, which uh, associations, we call them uh, uh, public uh, beneficiary associations or uh, association of, uh, of public interest and the actual uh, reality on the ground. So I will start with the governing uh, law that governs the, uh, the, uh, the work of associations in UAE. There is uh, law number two for year 2008 concerning associations and domestic institutions of the public interest. This is what they call the NGOs, uh, the uh, public interest uh, associations. We do not have NGOs as such. Uh, some of the important uh, law provisions that I would like uh, to share with you is that uh, it must be uh, initiated or established by UA citizens. Uh, and those individuals who apply for a, uh, an association uh, here in UAE must obtain a certificate of good, good conduct, first of all which is un understood as a requirement. However, the, uh, the certificate of good conduct uh, can, be help can be withheld and not given to the candidates for political reasons. I am one of those uh, people who are not granted uh, this uh, uh, certificate of good conduct so that I can, uh, I can use it for anything, uh, actually, including uh, getting a job. Uh, these uh, associations are directly governed by the Ministry of the Social Affairs. So requests to establish an association should be submitted to the Ministry for approval. But in reality, the final decision maker of uh, the approval or not or disapproval of these associations is the state security apparatus. Without their approval, nothing can be uh, established despite the fact that the law says it is the Ministry of Social Affairs, but really the final decision is made by them. Uh, article 16, which is the article that is used the most by the government to shut down uh, some of the, uh, uh, you know, the associations, states basically that uh, associations and their members shall be prohibited from interfering in politics or matters harming the security of the state and the governing regime therein, or from stirring the confessional, racist, or religious conflict therein. So this is one of the most uh, open-ended uh, clauses in the uh, law, and that is used at, on several occasions to shut down uh, uh, some NGOs. Approval of the Ministry of Social Affairs is also required to participating in conferences, symposiums, meetings, or gathering outside the country. So you cannot go really and participate under the name of the association outside the country without giving, getting the ministry approval, which in turn means the approval of the security as well, security uh, apparatus. Also, the approval is required if the association want to affiliate, participate, join or deal with any association or entity outside the country. Uh, also, an approval is required if a person from outside the country is participating in its local conferences, symposiums, gathering, or any other activities. Uh, these associations also get financial support from the government. And the uh, two associations that enjoy, actually, most of the government support uh, are the Human Rights Association and the Journalists Associations, and, uh, and also the uh, members of the Journalists Association. They've been enjoying uh, some good, uh, really, uh, financial uh, support uh, uh, from the government. I, I guess for obvious reasons, these, uh, these two enjoy the most. 
Also, Article 43 uh, of the uh, law uh, that we talked about states that the association may not accept grants, wills, or contributions, or the other contributions from any person or party from outside the state prior to the authorization. Uh, also in UAE, there are the ministry. No sin syndicates. Syndicates do not exist. And they are not allowed to be no bar, no bar associations uh, in UAE for any profession. Unions are uh, also very uh, restricted. You know, they are almost of no existence. In April uh, 2012, the UAE Minister of State for Foreign Affairs stated that a law to regulate uh, regional uh, and government organizations, NGOs, will be ready uh, by 2015. Uh, now we are in the middle of 2016 and no information about such law as of yet. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the reality on the ground. I will give you some examples on how the civil society uh, in UAE is right now. Uh, and they will uh, separate that into prior to 2011 and uh, post-2011 uh, time frame. Or, or 2011 and, and, and beyond, sorry. So prior to 2011, we've seen the authorities uh, uh, stopping conferences and forums discussing different subjects as, such as social security and uh, also meetings with the members of the Federal National Council, which is supposed to be uh, the parliament. And these kind of conferences and forums are usually stopped by uh, superior orders. And they never tell you uh, what is the entity, but this term usually means the security apparatus. Uh, also, we've noticed that a request to establish human rights association by leading human rights lawyers and civil society activists were not responded to by the government, by the ministry. And at later stage, an approval was granted to a different group, which is really now the, uh, the, human, the UAE Human Rights Association, which is an association that is totally linked to the government and its main purpose is really to defend the government against any of the uh, uh, criticism uh, uh, put on the government by the international human rights organizations, basically to whitewash the, uh, the image of the human rights uh, organizations so, so, by, of the government, the violations of the government. In 2011 and beyond, we've, we've seen uh, some more development in, uh, in uh, squashing, basically, the civil society and uh, not only hindering uh, its effort, but really uh, trying to eliminate it as much as possible if it is going to be a serious organization. The authorities disbanded the elected board uh, boards of the Jurist Association and also the Teacher Association and appointed a new board that belongs to the government instead of those uh, disbanded uh, elected members, elected, uh, those elected uh, members and those two boards. Uh, mem other members of, the, uh, of other associations who participated in call for democracy were also either arrested, interrogated, and jailed for a few days, or like an Islam member, which is the oldest association in the country with an Islamic background, faced the biggest crackdown in the history of UAE, as many of its members were arrested and accused of attempting to overthrow the government while they were operating in the country since 1974, and were enjoying, actually, also the support of some of the UAE rulers. So the, those individuals are still uh, languishing in the jail right now, uh, serving uh, jail terms between seven to 10 years uh, at minimum. Uh, also, uh, beyond 2011, we've seen that many of the local charity and religion uh, related uh, centers were shut down by the authorities mainly uh, Muslim uh, religions like New Muslim 
associations or centers and uh, you know Quran uh, centers and so on. They were shut down by the authorities. Others were kept active, but the authorities appointed their own people instead of the uh, people that were handling them. Uh, also, several international uh, NGOs and institutes operating in UA were shut down by the authority, by the authorities, claiming that they were violating the license. Uh, the NGOs that are uh, known to us uh, are the uh, National Democratic Institute, which is an inst U.S.-based institute, Conrad Edinburgh uh, Foundation, which is a German uh, uh, group, and also uh, Collab, Cent Collab Center, which is a U.S.-based and Rand Corporation from United States. The authorities also refused to renew the license of the uh, Gulf Research Center. Uh, also, many members of the international NGOs were prevented from entering the country and others were given lifetime ban, ban from, from re-entry while they were leaving the country. Most of them are from leading human rights organizations such as Human Rights Watch. Uh, also, as a new technique that is being done uh, for quite some time right now, we also followed the same steps and started to uh, establishing in several Gongos, uh, government organized NGOs, inside and outside the country. Some of them are now enjoying the ECOSOC eco status in UN. And uh, the government, and also there are some government owned uh, Gongos uh, from other countries, from uh, other poorer countries, or some other real uh, NGOs from other friendly countries that uh, have some. Uh, commercial interest with UAE are used uh, as technique during the UPR mainly for two uh, purposes. So they are using their own Gongos and also the Gongos of other countries and or uh, real NGOs that are connected uh, to the government with the uh, you know with some good uh, you know commercial interest. But of course that makes that put them really into the Congos more than the, uh, the, the NGOs. But anyhow, they use them for two main purposes. One, one thing is really to flatter the human rights record of the country, and two, to consume the time so that the genuine human rights organization yes. might have less time or no time to talk. Basically, hyperbole and, uh, uh, you know, whitewashing. That's all what they do. And there is one uh, serious and worrying development that we have been noticing uh, lately as well is that not only uh, these serious uh, harassments and violations are uh, happening against the associations inside the country, but also those that are outside the country face uh, harassments. But due to the impossibility, you know, as, as, as we, we can uh, understand why people are unable to work inside the country because of these uh, conditions. Many people uh, decided to live in exile and started their activism from there and established their NGOs. Uh, those are not left alone by the authorities here. They are targeted and, uh, many, in many different ways. And I have documented uh, five different or six different ways that I would talk uh, you about uh, right now. Number one is that... Uh, Mr. Mansour? Mr. Mansour? Uh, yes. Hello? Uh, Hello? Sorry? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, unfortunately we, we have just a one hour meeting and uh, there is only 15 minutes left and we have two more speakers on the panel. So I would like just to, to thank you very much for your testimony. Uh, can I have one more minute? 60 seconds. <laughs> Please, 60 seconds. All right, okay. All right, all right. So if the uh, owners of these NGOs are inside the country, then uh, their families uh, get harassed. If those uh, countries where NGOs uh, exist in, uh, they face pressure uh, based on the uh, economic interest, so the government gets uh, also pressure. If the NGO, NGO members are... Uh, uh, some NGOs members are uh, regularly at, at targeted by spy spywares. 
some cases are known uh, inside the country against uh, the owners of those individuals. Uh, also, some uh, governments are corrupt and they are easily uh, can be easily influenced. And uh, uh, in some cases, we've seen people are kidnapped from those countries and extradited uh, to UAE. Uh, also, putting some of the civil society and civil organizations in the terrorist list, and that happened uh, actually in the UAE uh, terrorist list. So, in summary, the security authorities have full control over the civil society. There is really no civil society that exists in the UAE, and this is one of the biggest problems that we face here. And by the second, I conclude my, my speech. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Hope to see you again in Geneva. <laughs> and now we have uh, only... Thank you.